get ready to take a trip down south because there's nowhere hotter than sultry New Orleans and fully dressed the first book and award-winning author Jerry Crotow's steamy new series, The Bayou Bachelors. No one makes the good times roll like the Boudreaux brothers, but one of these bachelors is about to meet his match when he hires a big city stylist to give him the makeover he needs to keep his multi-million dollar custom boat business afloat. Sounds like a great bachelor. But the closer she gets to turning him into a flawless executive, the harder it is to stay fully dressed. Book one in Jerry Crotow's Bio Bachelor series, Fully Dressed, is available now everywhere ebooks are sold. For more info, visit kensingtonbooks.com. Let's also talk about a new movie. Coming on March 9th, we have Thoroughbreds, where good breeding goes quite bad. Two best friends have one killer idea murder the stepdad who's ruining their lives. Critics are calling it wickedly funny and superbly unpredictable. It's American Psycho meets Heathers. So remember, go see it on March 9th. The movie is called Thoroughbreds. And now let's batch. Welcome to Bachelor Party. It's the finale post show. I am just reeling from the best <laughs> Bachelor finale I think ever. And I'm here with Lauren Zima of Entertainment Tonight. You're back. Welcome. I am back. Thank you so much for having me, especially considering that we are both so emotionally overwhelmed, distraught, exhausted. I'm just, my main way I've been referring to this was it was a boring finale until the last like 30 to 40 minutes, which was like maybe the most gripping television I've watched in six months. Riveting. Riveting. We had a split screen at one point. Oh my God. The split screen was (laughs) phenomenal. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about all of it, but let's just say in case, I don't know why you would listen to this. If you haven't watched the part one of the finale, the Monday night, three hour episode, go watch it. That's your warning. Here we go. (laughs) <laughs> um, so Ari proposes to Becca and his family is, um, psyched. They liked her more. It seems like we'll talk about that as well. And then we get some footage of them after the show's over on their happy couple weekends. They're in a hammock together. They're making breakfast. She seems like particularly happy. She's showing a type of personality we didn't really get to see on the show. All seemed like it was going well. And then they arrive in LA for a happy couple weekend, which is what they call it. And it's like a dope house. And there's a, the other footage we'd seen was like clearly cell phone footage, like someone held mm-hmm. their iPhone up or like probably a producer, but they weren't filming the other happy couple weekends. Yeah. What I imagined was that what you hear is, you know, these people become friends with the producers. And I thought these are videos they're taking and sending to the producers being like, oh, look how happy we are. Similarly to how Caitlin Bristow said that the reason that she accidentally spoiled her own season was because she accidentally like thought she was sending a producer photo of her and Sean, but then shared it with the world. Yeah. (laughs) So this, this is very dangerous video to take, but it it didn't spoil this. Yeah. (laughs) So they, they do it anyway. And then there is actual camera crew waiting for her at this house in LA up in the Hills. Mm. And I believe it's January 11th or 12th. uh, If I have my timeline correct. And it's because, so she gets there and she does a couple of interviews and she says like, she thought it was for, like after the after the final row special, basically. And then Ari arrives a little bit later. They sit on the couch, and he seems really flustered. And we know that he's there to break up with her, but she doesn't know that. And they sit down, and he was like, oh, how was Vegas? Like trying to like be nice for like 10 seconds before breaking her heart. And she's like, it was good. And, and so on her Instagram, there's a picture of her in Vegas at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, which is like a big convention in the mm-hmm. tech world, on January 10th. So... This means it's like one to two days later, so like or around then. So it's mid, it's it's mid January basically. Yes, and filming of The Bachelor ends mid to late uh, November, right around Thanksgiving. So Ari and Becca have been dating for about two months. She thinks that she has you know with her husband for the last two months, um, and that is not the case. And then we learned a ton of information about like what's happened in the last two months including that Ari had told Becca that he was still thinking about Lauren and that he's been in touch with Lauren. And it was just kind of like fascinating. Were you surprised that he was even in touch with her? I had so many questions even still. I will say, look, he said, I've always been honest with you. And we saw him being honest and him saying things like, you, well, you know, I talked to her. So Becca knew that he'd had a conversation with her. I love how you're breaking down this timeline. So what I have also heard is that Ari first called Lauren the night of the premiere. What? Yes, that's what I've heard. Oh, wow. So that's mm-hmm. January 1st. I or, heard, yeah, January 1st. Yes, that's what I've heard. So to I, say what? To say that he was still thinking about her. Wow. And so then that's and then about two weeks later is when he decided to get back together with her, like once and for all. It happened very quickly once the chain of events started to occur, I think. And 
what really blows my mind and what pained me in watching this for Becca is that he had told her, well, you know, I've been working through some things and you've been so helpful to me. So she had to help him work through his feelings to get back to Lauren. It was like very upsetting. Yes, it was very upsetting. Did you feel that we were being invasive as viewers by watching this moment? That's a really good question. Something I've been thinking a lot about Mm -hmm. it because I think it's the best Bachelor finale ever. Like the other, only other like kind of Bachelor moment that Mm -hmm. compares is um, the Jake and Vienna breakup that Chris Harrison moderated. Mm. Obviously. (laughs) Moderated. Yeah. (laughs) Refereed. Yeah. Mediated. (laughs) Um, Obviously, Jason Mesnick, who, you know, has been teased in all these proceedings. Um, He did a similar thing where he broke up with, um, he was, he chose Melissa Mm -hmm. Rycroft at the time Mm -hmm. and then changed his mind and ended up with Molly and they're still together. And Melissa and and, sorry, Jason and Molly are like one of the happy couples of of this world, but that wasn't live. That was in a different era that um, everyone had a little bit more warning about what's happening there. It wasn't the same kind of spoiler era and it was, everything was different. So I don't think this is on the same level, though obviously there's precedent for it. And I had heard this was going to happen, that he was going to change his mind. And I started referring to it as pulling a Mesnick. So there's precedent for it, but I don't think this sort of level of um, like like trickery has happened before. That was what was so crazy to me. And I get that, look, they both signed on to be on reality yeah. television. So everybody knows what they're signing up for. But she was definitely blindsided. It, Ari's been blindsided people left and right. Yeah. First, so first Lauren, then what, Becca, then Becca. Yes. Yeah. So actually one thing I wanted to ask you is what do you think is the worst thing Ari did in this finale? And there's a couple of contenders, uh, but like. I think the worst thing he did was proposed in the first place. Yeah. And that's what Becca said. She was mm-hmm. like, you should never gotten down on one knee. And also yeah. he had a great line. Like that's a real heartbreaker. And he was like, I'm going to choose you every day. Is Ugh. And then to go back and then be like, today, Ugh. I will choose you for two months. That's not even maybe is just really like devastating. He asked her in that cute little moment right after the proposal where they're always so beyond giddy and running on their endorphins and champagne. He said, when do you want to start having kids? Yeah. Are you kidding me? And the fact that he also had told Lauren B, I didn't really know until this morning. Yeah. And she said in the limo, well, he seriously made this decision three hours ago. My mind is blown by this. And I've talked to so many people, including female, females, women from this season, who, you know, were comparing it to Ben Higgins saying, I love you to two people. And what everybody says across the board is the difference is that Ben seemed distraught about the fact that he even Said was it. saying it, yeah. yes. And that Ari has never shown that guilt about saying it. And then on top of it all, proposes and seems so on board and then so completely changes his mind again. Yeah, and, and the, you know, this sort of, like, lack of remorse comes up a couple of times. He, uh, first of all, she says to him, like, you, she says, you have a lot of shit to figure out. And he responds with, I put a lot of thought behind this. And then he just sort of is like, no, like he's kind of like, no, I I know what I'm doing almost. Mm -hmm. And then there was another moment where, uh, where, where he says to her like, Hey, are you okay? And she's like, she just says, leave. What are you still doing here? Like, no, she's not okay. There's nothing worse than like, Oh, than being dumped or like, you know, something like horrible like that happening when someone inflicts pain and hurt on you and then be like are you okay no i'm not fucking okay ari leave why didn't he leave the house get out of this airbnb (laughs) get out of this home away no thank you it was so rough i want to give a shout out to becca for how many times she has said are you effing kidding me this she (laughs) becca acquitted herself so well i actually i really wanted to to be the bachelorette but now (gasps) so this kind of gets back to your question like i I sort of wanted to be becca because i really like her Mm -hmm. she actually seemed of like maybe of like all, of all of the women the one who I most would like want to pursue a friendship with like she seems mm. like cool and chill but back to your question of like was it too voyeuristic it feels crappy to be a part of like this experiment of, of subjecting someone you think you objectively like to um this kind of like as she's saying like it's so embarrassing like the public embarrassment and I, I totally get that like I think that's one of the um just like in terms of the the feelings I felt while watching it, I felt a lot of um, sympathy because I, I can't think of really any worse way to be dumped than a on television and then just putting all of the reality TV thing aside. Being dumped for another woman who you happen to know is just so painful because it's like 
everyone mm -hmm. always asks like what I do wrong. We hear that on the show all the time, but with Becca, it's like sort of more concrete. Like if there's another option that, you know, this guy is going towards, it's like, could you have done something different to make it work? Like if you could be more like Lauren, which obviously you can't, like that's not how relationships work. But when it's when it's a, um, it's not me, it's you kind of thing. Mm. There's like more room for like fantasy of like what went wrong. But this is like the problem is she's not Lauren. And so that sucks. And he's just putting her through so much pain. And like, and, and she's like, this is embarrassing. I think she said, this is embarrassing. You think you have your whole, you have whole future and head ahead of you. And then you don't like, I don't know that that's very real. This was the most real 25, 30 minutes that the show I think has ever delivered. Yeah. And we, I, like they said, it's the first time it's been unedited like this. Yes. I liked that you saw the cameras moving. Yeah. That you saw it happening that we got that crazy split screen. I want to say, I do not really need a woman ever again to ask in this franchise, what did I do wrong? Yeah. If you're asking that, you probably didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. It's totally that person. And don't put that guilt on yourself. And I also really like, because, you know, now the question is going to be, is Becca going to be the Bachelorette? Right. I really liked that at least they didn't show it, but she didn't seem to take it out on the show. She wasn't no. like, get this mic off me, that kind of moment. She really held herself together while she, also still giving us her true emotional reaction. She did have that great... Uh, okay, I'm done. And she gets up off the couch mm -hmm. and she goes to start packing or whatnot. That was amazing. Yeah. I was like, you girl, girl. Yes. Yes, Becca. Yes. I know. Yes. Well, Seriously. I want to talk about the split screen. Yeah. I was blown away by it. <laughs> I loved it. It was like the Rosie O'Donnell. Do you remember on The View? Like yeah. the split screen. I mean, that was, this is again a split screen iconic moment. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I feel like it really changed the way that I see Becca. Like mm. it just um, literally changed the way that we see them. <laughs> but we're so used to the show being made and presented in a specific way that a disruption to that feels like gigantic. Like it feels like it's like a seismic change in like television landscape, which is so silly. Cause like, this is how producers see it, but it's such a, such a view into how like the kind of decisions they make in terms of producing the show that I just thought was really fascinating. Cause I was like, it's really interesting to be able to see both reactions mm -hmm. and then you have to, you obviously can't watch both, but like you can, you know, the sort of like side by side nature of it, like going back and forth it was really fascinating. It it felt, it was much more immersive. I think that was part of it. I'm so here for more of that, especially because, you know, we're 22 seasons into Bachelor, 13, 14 seasons into Bachelorette. And we very rarely get those moments like earlier in the season when Lauren B was breaking down to the producer. I love that, especially with social media, with the fact that these producers have followings yeah. on social media. We all know that the production is a huge part of it. All the alumni say they become friends with the producers. Give us more of a window into yeah. that. I'm so here for that. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And um, Chris Harrison was saying like in Winter Games, there's a lot more interaction between the cast and him and the other mm -hmm. producers and it, it would be cool to see more of how it actually gets made because I, I think it's I think it's compelling I mean I don't know it certainly made like some of the bad stuff feel so much worse and I was wondering like was there a particular moment for you that was particularly hard to watch even from like her interviews before they go into split screen like just from the whole from the mm. whole episode really I guess if you you know I, I think if yes there was the moment when she read from that journal to mm -hmm. him and told him that the day that she met him was the eight-year anniversary of her father dying. Yeah. And that just so put into perspective to me that we have only seen the surface of Becca, yeah. that there are so many more layers to her with what she's gone through in her life at a really young age. And she has so much depth to her and how much this must have meant to her. Because I noticed also, she said it a couple times this season, and especially in the finale, she kept saying, I can see him as the father of my children. Yeah. And the fact that she doesn't have her own dad around and that then she's allowing this guy to come into her world, like she said, letting down the guard she has up for her heart and to be like that father figure for her kids, she just really had gone all in on this. And that's why the finale and everything, She, it's like, I don't want that heartbreak for her. Yeah, and <laughs> I think that's a really good point. Um, he also, like, when he was like, when can we start making babies or whatever? Uh -huh. He had a really, in a weird way, a clinical approach to this. And I think Lauren kind of cracked that that approach. But he clearly was just like, all right, we, I think we talked about this last time. Like, he found his, he saw his brother got married and, like, people were moving on around him. So he's like, okay, it's time for me. Like, let's find a wife. And because he's a moron, decided <laughs> the best way to do that would be go on The Bachelor, have a, a array of women presented to him, and then mm -hmm. wife one of them up. Like, it was such like a, I feel like he had a really unimaginative and uncreative approach to finding someone and like really thought the show was going to work for him. And lo and behold, like something didn't go according to plan. Mm -hmm. And that's how he ended up picking Becca when he should have just picked Lauren from the 
very beginning. Well, all season long, it's felt like he didn't exactly know what he wanted, that he yeah. was also torn between between what he thought he should want versus what he really wanted. Um, all the women have said that. They've said that that's why, you know, when he liked Chelsea but then sent her home, it was confusing that he liked Becca but didn't really want to acknowledge that he liked Becca, that he thinks being mature is waking up early. And <laughs> it's like there's just a lot of inner conflict for him. And I really don't think he was ready to go on the show. And I think that he well, wants to be ready, but he wasn't ready to do this. That's a good point. And I think that it just sort of speaks to the fact this is really me and hopefully I'll never meet Ari. <laughs> but he's just like a weak individual because some everyone get, has second thoughts and has doubts about like their decisions they, they make. But a strong person just like sticks to the conviction, their convictions and goes with it. And and so I don't think he should have stayed with Becca if he wasn't into her, but he shouldn't have picked her in the first place. Mm-hmm. It's so insane. And that, you know, that kind of leads me to what I think was the most painful thing to watch, yes. which I will share with you in a second. But first, let's talk about our sponsors. Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. With three mattress models, the Original, the Wave, and the Essential, Casper mattresses are perfectly designed to soothe and cradle your natural geometry. Not to mention, the breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulate your body temperature throughout the night. And it's delivered right to your door in a small how-do-they-do-that size box. It comes with free shipping and returns in the U.S. and Canada. But the best part is that you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep-on-it trial. After all, you spend one-third of your life sleeping, so you should be comfortable. I have a Casper, and I love it. I sleep on it every night, and I had done so for well over a year. It came in the box as advertised. It quickly went back to its original shape after I unfurled it, and I couldn't be happier. So if you want this experience, you can get $50 off your mattress from Casper by going to casper.com slash bachelor and using bachelor at checkout. That's casper.com slash bachelor with the offer code bachelor for $50 off your mattress purchase. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, let me tell you the moment that I thought was the hardest to watch. And you picked a deeper one. But for me, <laughs> for Don't me. get down on yourself here, Juliet, okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> We're already doing great. Um, we already didn't propose to someone change our mind and then it go back so, to It's just else. so crushing. I really, I was emotional and like I was watching the episode and it was raining. And oh, God. I, it was late in the afternoon. Oh God, what are you doing to yourself I here? I know. <laughs> I know. And I just felt so sad for Becca. And one moment that I, looking back on it now that I'm just like, God, that's mm-hmm. awful, was they're talking to her before she arrives. She's doing you know, the interviews. She's mm-hmm. like, be like, oh, I can't wait for Ari to come. We're doing great. She's like looking out over the expanse, the hills of Hollywood. Ugh. And then they asked her about the ring and she holds her hand up and she's like, he did a great job with the ring selection, yeah. and um, I just wanted to kill myself on her behalf. It's so sad. Big question, which maybe you'll know. Does she get to keep the ring, or does she have to no, give it back? she has to give it back. That's bullshit. She should sell it. She should be like, what? It's not mine. She should I pawn know. it. Get, some, get a few grand, baby. I believe that it is if something goes wrong within two years of the proposal, you have to give it back. After two years, you can oh, keep it. Oh, no. That's so unfair. <laughs> That's really ridiculous. I would steal it and sell it, I think. I I would be like, oh, I didn't know about that, and then sell it. You would think in all of the situations there have been, this would be the case where they'd be like, you You can can keep keep it. it. (laughs) Yeah, particularly because, and we have still haven't fully answered this question, but like the voyeuristic aspect of Mm -hmm. it. Like, if you're her, do you even want to be The Bachelorette? Do you trust the producers enough to go through this again? Because they set her up for this heartbreak. They didn't have to, te- they didn't have to televise it. But for whatever reason, Ari consented to it. He went along with it. And it was mm-hmm. a whole production. And that and The Bachelor presents a lot of moral quandaries, most of which I am I have a hard time, I, an easy time getting over. Um, but this one, I just, because I like Becca, I really feel for her. Yeah. Um, and even though this is not the same kind of thing that we dealt with talking about Paradise, this, this is sad. Like, I, her hurt seemed very real, and I guess we'll find out more on the after the final rose, like how she's doing. But it feels bad to be a part of that. And like, how, how does she move forward with the show, if at all? With the, with I one hundred percent think she should be the Bachelorette if that's something that's going to be offered to her, which I would guess it is. Yeah. But I one hundred percent think she does it because this cannot be her story. Right. Her story cannot be. I was the girl who was dumped for someone else to my face on TV, and then what? She goes to the grocery store and lives her life, and everybody stops her and. Is, feel sorry for her. Right. I, I talked to Claire Crawley a lot before uh, oh. Winter Games. 
And she would just talk to me about how still, after the Juan Pablo thing, people come up to her and they're like, I'm so sorry you haven't found love. You know, What's and wrong obviously, with people? Who does that? Uh, That's I like think, not okay. I know. I think they think they're being nice. I mean, I know Ben Higgins, like after, you know, him and Lauren break up, people come up to you and they're like, I'm so sorry. And can you imagine? No. And that's, again, that would be her story. So if I'm her, I do it because this is not going to be what my chapter of life is. Right. And that's where my book closed, you know? Like she needs a whole new memoir, a new show, a new everything for her. And I think she deserves it. So I'm here for Becca. I am. I definitely am too. I, I really like her. I just think the other issue would be um, you like with Rachel when she was the Bachelorette, she had from early November mm. to March to move on. Like she had a while. Uh, Becca doesn't have. Or it's not even that long, but she also didn't go as far. With Becca, it's like a really quick turnaround. Like true, it's two months from thinking you're engaged and being in love to then being the Bachelorette. And like, there's no way she's will be over it by the time film, filming begins. Like it could be, it, it probably would be a great distraction for her. And I think if I was her friend, I'd be like, yeah, just do it. Like, what do you have to lose? Maybe you'll meet someone, get paid. Like who mm-hmm. cares? But like for the show themselves, like I know they are invested in a um, somewhat realistic setup. Like they want you to be able to buy in to the, this working. And if yeah. it does, they want you to believe in it. I would have a hard time believing Becca was ready for it. Like it would not just be like a made up backstory. It'd be more like, yeah, this woman just got dumped by her fiance. I'm with you on that 100%. Um, it's interesting because Lauren B. had not been that broken up that long from her fiance, I don't think. I think um, it was like seven months or really? something like that. Yeah. But the weird thing is Lauren told uh, Ari's dad, more on the parents in a second, that she was engaged. But she didn't say I was engaged twice, which I only know because Rob said it on a previous episode. I know. Robert Mills told you that. And I'm so wondering why we didn't get that information. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, do you but- do you have any information on how they got um, Becca's ex to Peru? Like how that all went down? I actually saw he just gave an interview with a sports outlet yeah, about with this. Yeah, the athletic. Um, yeah. It. I don't know. I, mm, I don't have any insider information about it. I don't believe that he just jumped on a plane and went no. there. His suit was Definitely far too possible. well pressed for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and very coordinated. The socks matching the tie and the whole thing. Uh, I don't know. I, Becca tweeted something about how it had been a really unhealthy relationship, which made me not want to give him the time of day like I sure. said with Becca. <laughs> yeah, of course. We all, we all love Becca. And and I think, that's a, why did Ari pick her at all? Like, what do you think it was that he, that he was just like, okay, she's the one? I think that... It was threefold. One, he felt she was a safer option. And I do think Ari has a high level of insecurity and that he's needed a lot of reassurance all season long, which is funny because he didn't like that he had to give Lauren B reassurance. Yeah, he needs it. Um, Two, I think that he felt like she was the type of woman he was supposed to want. Again, he felt like I've dated this certain type of women, and but really I should end up with this. And three, I think his family played a huge part in it. I don't remember the last time we saw a family so adamantly say, this is who we think that you should choose. Totally. It was almost like they were doing like the arranged marriage kind of thing. Like, yeah, you're with Becca. <laughs> they they definitely, they also clearly wanted to like Lauren. I think they probably could tell that he liked Lauren more because they, because the mom was both like, yeah, we loved Lauren. Like, hopefully we'll love Becca. And then they did end up liking her more for sure. Mm-hmm. Although the dad was like, yeah, I'm cool with either. His parents like really cracked me up though. I loved that. That was, I was so glad that they cut to Becca responding in a confessional to the fact that his dad told her, whoever Ari picks, and we're happy with it. Like, that's so insulting. I know, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. It sucks. If, if I just feel like the father, like, ruined her self-esteem or her confidence in, in the relationship. And it was kind of bizarre because, yeah, they did show the family mentioning Lauren over and over and over, which yeah. I don't remember the last time we saw family do that so much. Me neither. It was so funny. They're just, they're probably just like, what are we even doing? I know. I love the mom and the dad. I mean, I loved them because they were rude, though. I can't imagine having to meet those parents. I loved that the dad said, to Ari that he needed to be with Becca because Becca was going to give him the kick in the ass he needed. Yeah. That was a real window into Ari to me. Definitely. What 36-year-old's parents are like, you really need a kick in the ass to get your stuff together, you know? I don't know. I don't. It's a great question. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't really know. He uh, he definitely was really affected by it. And hearing him talk to his family about the various dates, I also just thought it was, like, really um, illuminating. Mm. Like, for, I think he just can't explain why he's into Lauren. I, I actually think that he does love Lauren more. And it's like such a foreign feeling to him that he was like confused by it and, and didn't know what to do with it. So he ended up going with Becca, basically. Yeah, he said all season long they both have, they have this undeniable connection. But then he also said, you know, I think someone in his family 
mentioned who could you stay up all night talking to, and he did not seem to think that Lauren was that person. Yeah, because she has no words. Right. Vulture yeah. did an accounting of all like 100 lines that she spoke this season, and you would think that the uh, we don't know, but presumably they're together. I assume they are. Do you know? I do. Do. I, Wink wants for their together. Uh, well, I, we've we've reported it, so oh, I'll just have? say. I mean, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Don't listen to the next ten seconds. But yeah, no, he's they're still together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could, I'm not surprised at all. She was really into him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not surprising, and he's obviously really into her. Have you ever seen someone be so shut down after getting dumped during what they thought would be a proposal moment? She just, I mean, barely reacted. Yeah. I- I think that she is probably a really guarded, reserved person. I've talked to the other women and they have all said, you know, because I'm like, are you closer with Becca, with Lauren? And everybody has lovely things to say about her and says she's so nice, but also says they don't feel like they know her. I shouldn't say everybody, but the women I've talked to say they don't feel like they know her that well just because she is. She's not somebody who shares a lot. So I don't know. We don't know what might be going on behind closed doors with Ari and Lauren, but I really liked when Becca said comparing me and Lauren is like comparing an apple to a starfish. (laughs) And I think, think we was? know who the starfish is um, in this I, situation. Just, you know, my spirit, my spirit animal is a starfish. So me and Becca are meant to be. Are you 100% changed now from Tia for Bachelorette to Becca for Bachelorette? Yeah, I am. Yes, Juliet. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I am. And I love Tia. I will say that. I think Tia is going to be amazing on Paradise. I want Tia to be on Paradise. Her dear friend Raven found love on Paradise. That's wild. They're still together. Adam is the nicest person. Really? Okay. Yes. He's so nice. And all of the other women also say he's like the type of guy who, if you have your girlfriends over, like he like goes out and buys a couple bottles of wine Mm -hmm. for everybody. He's great. And I think Tia is going to be great on Paradise. And... I'm here for Becca. It's all working out really well, truly, for all the women. I, I, I loved so. all these women. I, I, I'm nervous that Becca's Bachelorette, but looking back on the season, do you think you can point to a time or to an episode where you're like, oh, they started editing differently? Because I believe they don't lock episodes until Ooh. pretty close to when they air. Great question. Mm. I think there was a little bit of a shift, and I think it started with the Tahoe episode. Okay. Because that's when I think we first see him like worrying about Lauren a little bit and like reaching out to her. Mm. I believe. It's... I, I think it it's, was. It's very hard for me to pinpoint, but there was definitely a time when we started seeing him just saying over and over. I mean, how many times have we heard him say that he has a connection with Lauren that he can't explain? Yeah. And considering that that sentence conveys no meaning, we heard it quite a lot. And I think we heard it quite a lot because how it was all going to end up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Why else would you air that sentence? I can't explain my connection with her. In my mind, if I'm a producer, I'm like, well, that's terrible television that you yeah. can't explain it. So we shouldn't air this. I know. We're but like, we made to. a huge mistake. <laughs> your job is to explain the connection. Truly. I mean, you had one job, Ari, and it's to explain your connection. By the way, you know what is so funny to me? So I went and looked up this interview that I did with Jason Mesnick at Jaden Tanner's wedding. Oh, Cool. I know, I'm really going through my archives. Here. I like it. This is why we had to have you on. You have, you've got the you have a journalist pedigree for it. Well, thank you. Um, but so Jason Mesnick told me at Jaden Tanner's wedding that he would not let his own kids go on reality television. Yeah, of course not. No one wants Ty to be on TV. Yeah, well, <laughs> because uh, and when he said he goes, well, it worked out for me, but it took a lot for it to work out for me. Yeah, and obviously he's referring to what he went through. But then he said, he I said, well, what advice do you give people before they're going to be the Bachelor? And he said that you have to be a good host in essence. Like you have to be someone who can express themselves and who can lead the conversation. And so it was just so funny to me to have all those moments from Jason Mesnick and now to be here with Ari having, as you said, pulled a Mesnick and here we are. And it's all inexplicable. I know it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Also, you'd think perhaps if he was pushed to describe his feeling with Lauren or like really think about what it is that he loves about her And then explained it not only to the national public, the producers, but particularly to his family. Perhaps he wouldn't have gotten into the situation, Ari. Like, do a little Mm. bit more work. Like, I just feel like he's so not, he's definitely not a motive, which is what you're just describing, which, like, you have to be, basically, which is why he's been, a lot of people don't like him. But I'm just not sure that he's ever been, like, challenged or, Mm. like, asked to consider real feelings before. I mean, or maybe not since his, that's rude, maybe not since his last relationship, which did sound pretty serious with, um, the woman that he dated before Emily season. Cause that seems like that was his last real long relationship. That is what has been kind of an alarm bell for me all season long is that we were given the narrative that he hasn't been in love since Emily Maynard to which I said, well, it's been five years. Why not? Yeah. And look, also that's the premise of the show is I've had a really hard time finding love. So I'm coming on this show. So he really fulfilled that kind of origin story yeah. premise of the show. He's a good vessel for it, but he doesn't have any, there's no interior life that we're aware of. <sighs> 
well, you know, he he thought a starfish would come into that vessel. He's the, op- <laughs> he's the opposite of Walter Mitty. No interior life for him. But uh, I, I just don't, I don't even know. The and, only thing I'll say in his defense is, again, that he hadn't been on camera in so long. And I yeah. think he got a little better as the season went on. Why do you his, think, that, well, go ahead. His best articulate performance was in his breakup. That's what I'm saying. I think that that's why he wanted to film it. (laughs) Because I think that he really wanted to be able to explain himself. And it'll be really interesting to see how he handles himself on live television. The one moment that I was just sort of like, in addition to like being mad at him, but I was Mm -hmm. just like, get the fuck out of here. I just wanted Mm -hmm. to like, you know, hit him with the GTFO was when he said to her, like trying to like defend himself. And like, well, I've been really upfront with you. And it's like, and, but then a little bit later, he was like, yeah, maybe I didn't tell you the extent to which I've been thinking about this. And I just wanted to be like, no, you have to go. It made me so mad. I really, I have so many more questions for Becca about how much he told her about all this yeah. and how much she was helping him work through it, which sounded very big of her to do. But does honesty excuse what is still a betrayal? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah, you were honest with her, but you still proposed to her, told her you wanted to have children with her and are still betraying her. So- and then tricked her into televising this breakup. Uh huh. Or, or if you weren't the one responsible, like we're a part of it. Which she did. Yeah. She does come off well. I, I think the bigger question is like, what do we make of Lauren? Mm. And where do, where can Lauren's like character arc go from here? And we'll get into that in a minute. Let's also talk about vacation. That's a huge part of The Bachelor. Do you love to travel? Avoid going to tons of websites and just use tripping.com. One search lets you compare every home from the world's top vacation rental sites in one place to find the best deal on your perfect vacation rental. Vacation rentals just offer more. They offer more privacy, more space under one roof, more choices with fully stocked kitchens, extra bedrooms, and even hot tubs. All the comforts of home and then some. Best of all, at tripping.com, you can join the millions of travelers who find more savings with rates up to 80% less than traditional hotel rooms. So if you're planning spring break on the beach in Florida, go to tripping.com. If you can't wait to swim in Lake Tahoe this summer, also go to tripping.com. And still, if you're dreaming of sitting on the deck of a Smoky Mountains cabin, go to tripping.com. This year, save time and money when you book the vacation home of your dreams with tripping.com slash bachelor. That's T-R-I-P-P-I-N-G dot com slash bachelor. Find your perfect vacation rental at tripping.com slash bachelor. Okay, let's talk about Lauren because I don't really know. She's kind of in the worst position because Ari has been given the platform to explain himself. Becca, we all feel horrible for her and adore her and are impressed by how she handled herself in the moment. She is just such a pro. She knew knew to go hide when she wanted to cry. She's like went to the bathroom. That's the number one tip. If you're on a reality show and you need to cry, (laughs) get away from the camera. That's the number one. I know. Because that's the only place they can't follow you. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. On the challenge, they usually have sex in the bathroom for that reason. Mm. I'm pretty sure Ben and JoJo did too, by the way. Remember, there was that moment where the camera almost looked like it had been set on the floor and you could hear the audio through the room. But Ben and JoJo? Yes. Yes. And he was like, I love you, but I love her too. Also, Kristen told me, or Crystal, oh my gosh, wow, we've already forgotten her by this point. I know. It's like, who? (laughs) Who? Crystal told me she was mad about that never before seen footage of her that was shown because she said she was, I think, in, she said, in the bathroom with her roommate when she called Ari the needle, you know what, and the other women the C word. Yeah. So she was not happy about that because I think she thought the bathroom was her safe space. But, you know, it turns, assume you're mic'd. It turns out the safe space is the vans. I can't believe how much <laughs> we've lost to transportation. I think that that's going to, ch- I think we're going to see It's it. got to have to change. change. Put some GoPros in there for sure. It's pretty bizarre. Like, I, I've never worked on a reality show and I would know to do that. Well, I, on The Real Housewives, they always have cameras in the vans Of now. course. Yes. How else also would we see Vicky typing away as they're in the limo? We've had clock, the clock, clock, best clock, clock. moments in the cars on Real Housewives. Oh, Let's my God. Go. Of course. And Kyle and Kim's big fight in oh. season one or two. Yes. Beverly Hills. The fight in Ireland with Tamara and Vicky and Tamara shaking and Shannon. We're going on. Vicky another. does her best work in the car. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's com- it's completely ridiculous to not have that the camera footage there. Um, when you were at the Women Tell All, did you have an, enough details to get into what was coming and like ask the women about Ari or Lauren versus Becca? 
So I've talked to a lot of them actually since then oh. as well. And um, they all say that Becca and Lauren have no hard feelings towards each other. That's nice. That they are both like class acts of people and that they understand that Ari is the one who <laughs> did everything here. I think certain women are going to grill Ari. I think that Becca M is going to grill Ari. <laughs> Becca, baby, Be- Becca. Becca told me that she thinks that Ari was never ready for marriage and that he is not going to last with Lauren. Interesting. Actually, Becca was here last week mm-hmm. and she has a message for Ari, which you can see on the Ringer Instagram at Ringer in our story. Check it out mm-hmm. if you've watched the finale. Very, very important <laughs> message from Becca, let me tell you. Uh, so how did the other women feel about Lauren? Because that's where, I, that's the kind of the biggest like question for me is like, what about Lauren? Because we don't know her well, as we've addressed several times. Mm-hmm. And now she's like in a really shitty spot where I don't know if she's going to get like, I don't know if she's capable of or will have the opportunity to express herself. Even if she had the opportunity, I don't know. I, she's just such a quiet person. I yeah. think Ari's going to speak for the both of them. I guess so. Which is just like makes me cr- cringe. I would How never about- want, I never want Ari to speak for me. And I certainly wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't want like any boyfriend to be like, this is our position. Right. And I certainly would not want to be Ari. I will say you see the tension happen in, um, couple interviews after these finales because it kind of has to be that because they do all the interviews together yeah. and one person does kind of have to speak up for both of them like yeah. literally or the interview gets weird I mean I remember moments when I was interviewing like Nick and Vanessa or Ben and Lauren and somebody's got to take the reins here so it I would imagine it creates some tension but I also think that Lauren seems to be okay with being quieter so yeah I've, I've heard from previous leads previous bachelors mm-hmm. that one thing that's impressed upon them and they're supposed to keep in mind for the health of their relationship is protect the one who you're going to choose. Like put Mm -hmm. them in a position to look good and protect your relationship with them and like do everything possible to lay the groundwork for a successful relationship while you're still on the show because it's almost like after the show's filming is when it gets really hard Mm -hmm. and because the lead stays a center of attention and more questions are sent to them. Plus you have to like relitigate what was going on as you watch the show back. And so that is a challenge that face all of these couples. And I've heard that from a couple of the bachelors. And so I can't even imagine what it's like for Lauren. Like she was Ari's put her in the worst position. Well, we've got to see what he said to win her back as well. I mean, I know. Do you think we're going to get that? I hope to God we get that, considering we had to watch Becca's breakup. Yeah, I do there's think no, we'll there's get no way that. they won't. They won't. Yeah, show that. I they think that's coming to. out after the final rose. Also, did you notice that Lauren said something to Ari about not remembering meeting her in yes, Dallas? Yes, I was wondering if you knew about that. I don't know about that. I'm gonna assess that out. That's wild. So they met before the show one time. I know. I wonder if it was. I just, I don't know why he'd be in Dallas. I was trying to think of who he knew there. She had lived in Dallas. I think she has. She lives there now, I think. I think she left. Oh, she did? Yeah, but she had been living there. Okay. But I think she might have moved home or something, but. To Virginia Beach. To Virginia Beach, yes. <laughs> that metropolis where you take someone on a hometown date horseback riding, even though you haven't been It looked nice, in years. I have to say. Yeah, I mean, I just was really wondering about that. It made me think, has she had a crush on him for a long time? Maybe. Like, why did they meet? I don't know. And also, that's random because if she did, I don't know, it was supposed to be Peter. So, like, did she go on the show for Peter or for Ari? I know. Lots of questions. I she also just seems like kind of um lit, like very like she takes things very literally. Like I've noticed that she wears the most functional outfits. <laughs> like for their date to Machu Picchu, she was wearing what I would wear on like a Sunday morning in LA if I looked like her, which was just like yoga pants, Nikes, and like a crop top, and then yeah. like a jean a jean shirt over it. I think the most emotive we've seen her was when she found out they were going to Machu Picchu. Yeah, it's like, do you have a love of ancient history, back, uh, Lauren, that I, I wasn't aware of? Very strong reaction to Machu Picchu from Lauren. Apparently, she loves mountains. I was blown away. She was so excited. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> but she was wearing like a really functional outfit. I was yeah. just surprised by it because his was not. He was just wearing like sure. regular Ari jeans, like, I don't know, like a pre- premature aging kind of outfit or something like that. I'm waking up with the sun. Yeah, exactly. And she, But she was like, she was in her patented yoga pants. No mm. one's ever worn yoga pants on camera more um, on The Bachelor than Lauren. How about the moment when they were seemingly running away from the cameras to kiss? That gave me the vibe that they were getting to the point of being sick of being on the show. Yeah. What did you think of it? I think that they, the root of their relationship is physical. And I think Mm. they probably just like really wanted to make out without the cameras watching. Well, how about when he asked her how she saw their life? And I think I don't have the exact verbiage, but she said something just along the lines of like a lot of dogs. Like it's going to be that we walk the dog and then we have some wine. And then on the weekends we go to the dog park and we have the wine. And they talked about how their dogs would get along. And also, can I just say... 
why does he say so many of the same things to Lauren and Becca? Like, at least switch up the verbiage. We just heard him say, I love you so much to both of them. And it just really bothered me. I think that his family probably got the impression that um, Lauren doesn't really, is it wasn't realistic about a future. And that's why Ari kept being like, yeah, you're the more logical choice and why they're more interested in Becca. Mm-hmm. And I, just Lauren seems younger. And, and maybe that's what Ari's into. But first of all, she is two years younger enough. That's a huge difference. But when like percentage of life, when you're under 30, that's a big percentage. And so there's a lot like 25 to 27 is not insignificant, you know? And I, I just think that she uh, brings out like a, different side of him I he has like this nauseating baby voice that I think he only whips out for Lauren at least as far as I've seen (laughs) it's so gross it makes me uncomfortable like oh I I just can't I heard him do it with Becca when he broke up with her and he was like are you okay I know I hate his like sweet voice it's just like please speak normally I just that's when he kind of gets into dad mode and things get weird to me is like are you okay I know like and I don't like did you do your homework I don't like that um and also I guess it's the question of who do you end up with in life? Do you end up with someone who's a little more your opposite and the opposites attract and opposites push each other thing? Or do you need to end up with somebody who's exactly like you? Because I think Ari and Lauren B are very similar. Me too. They're both so insecure. They both, and by that, I just mean I watched that they both seem to need a lot of reassurance. He also really needed Becca to tell him it's okay. Like he needed, he was, it seemed like he was looking for her to be like, okay, like go follow your truth basically, where she was not going to give him that obviously. And I think the reason he wouldn't leave when she told him to is because he was like looking for her. He was looking for a more definite closure, which is really unfair to expect first of all at all. And second of all, in the moment, like let her gather herself. And it just seems like he, he, neither them, neither Lauren nor, or, nor Ari can handle like any kind of ambiguity, particularly emotional ambiguity. Mm. And it like just ruined him basically. And so Becca had more like definite, a more definite future. And like, that's what he decided to go for, even though it was the, obviously the wrong, wrong choice. It was bizarre, but him and Lauren, you're right. Like him and Lauren do a lot in common. Like when they were watching the clouds come into Machu Picchu, she said, I love that, which is Ari's <laughs> patented line. I know. I love that. I love that Becca said to him, what are you still doing here? She treated yeah. him the same way she treated Ross when he came, which is like, I don't have time for you. She is a decision yeah. maker, which is why I think she would be a great bachelorette. Yeah, she probably would. She would have the courage. She would have the courage to stand by her convictions, which Ari really lacks. You know, when he first started this season, I kept thinking, "Oh, he does seem serious, and he is sending people home if he's not into them." Like Bibiana was at first portrayed as kind of a dramatic character, and he didn't see anything mm-hmm. with her, and so he sent her home. But then after that, when it just kept getting so confusing as to who he was sending home, why? I know. Then I realized, no. This is not what I thought it was. He doesn't know what he's doing. Well, I also felt bad for Becca that she seemed to get a crap date again. Lauren and Ari got like a private train. I know. On which I think at one point they were sipping champagne and looking at stray dogs and talking about how cute the stray dogs were, I think. And then Becca, I don't even know really know what her date was. And it's just like how in the fantasy suite, she had to pee in the sand. I know, that sucks. Uncouth. Unbelievable. <laughs> unfair. <laughs> totally unfair. Also, has it ever rained this much on a bachelor season? Oh, I know. A lot of rain in Peru. All of our tears for this season. It's pretty, it is pretty wild. What's the biggest question that you still want answered out of the, after the final rose? I want to know how much Ari was telling Becca about how he felt for Lauren, because I think that what he's going to stand behind is the I was up front thing. That's mm-hmm. going to be his platform is I was honest. I was honest all season I long. I told her that I was. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I had it all happen on camera. I was always up front. I think that what he said was that he was still reeling from and kind of processing the loss of Lauren, I get the sense that Becca didn't understand that he was literally thinking, I might want to go and be with Lauren. Yeah. He probably wasn't like, I'm having second thoughts. I don't know if you're the one. No. And why would he say that? He said something like that. The more I hung out with you, I wrote this down. The more I hung out with you, the more I realized I was losing the possibility of reconciling things with Lauren. Yeah. And, and after he had proposed to her and Becca was like, yeah, that's how relationships go. Right. Yes, Becca, you're correct. Ari, you're a moron. And what drove me <laughs> nuts, <laughs> Julie, that's like, you're, Sorry. You're, you are Becca. You don't mince words. I'm just so, I'm just so. I so uh, sympathize with Becca. I just feel so sorry for her. (laughs) Well, right. We've all been there. But, you know, we haven't all been there in the fact that he was engaged to someone. And so clearly, even from the minute he had proposed to her, was, I guess, still thinking about the possibility of reconciling things with Lauren. That didn't didn't, leave his mind. Yeah, or just didn't consider it final. Like I don't don't think the gravity of a proposal, probably because it was through television and not, like, on his own terms, like, really sunk in. And so— it was less about the proposal and more about like the time, the period mm-hmm. of time that as as he 
pursued things more with Becca. I just feel like he was like, wow, I'm like actually like developing a relationship here and this is not the relationship I want. And but that line really stood out to me too. It was a, a, a crucial one. It's just like, what are you thinking, dude? I really, I really feel for her. I really do. I just want to give her a hug. I'm so upset. <laughs> I know. I know. It makes me hate him. And like, I was really softening on him. I was like, God, I've been so hard and he's just not used to being on TV. But now I'm just furious. I talked myself into a Becca tizzy. You know what? I, I think that what also summed up for me that Ari is a lot like Lauren too. And that, you know what? Maybe, maybe they're going to be perfect for each other. Do you remember the moment with the alpacas? When Becca was looking at the alpacas and she's like, oh, they're so cute or something. And Ari just goes, they are so cute. Have a thought. Yeah. Have an original thought. And you know what? If your only original thought is that you were thinking about another woman the whole time you were with your fiance, then no thank you. I, I hope we get some at-home footage with them because, like, let me see a conversation. Right. What is that like? That was one of the coolest. I mean, just sort of we'll come back to it. Like, the split screen will define this episode. Agreed. I, I think, going Agreed. forward. Iconic. Like, it was completely iconic and really changed the way I see the show and literally and figuratively. And also, again, changed the way we see these two people. And that was just the realest thing that's happened on The Bachelor, like, in ages. And I, I hope we get something like that with Lauren to understand a little bit like what he sees in her and like what their relationship is like. I feel like we're almost owed that as viewers. I almost feel like Becca is owed that too. Like let's actually see what's going on there. Although if I were her, it'd probably be too hard to watch. But like this is kind of a weirdly revolutionary moment in reality TV. And it's cool. It happens once in a while where they peel back the fourth wall or it comes down whatnot. Walls, you know, huge part of The Bachelor. And um I won't forget it. It was just an amazing, uh, amazing moment. And I also commend the director for changing up how they produce the show. Totally. Especially since, frankly, this season, the ratings were down a little bit. Yeah. The critique has been that he's boring. So the series doesn't disappoint. This franchise doesn't disappoint. We're going to have an absolutely insane, unforgettable finale. What questions do you still have? I'm actually more curious about like how the episode was made than anything else. With the relationships, I agree. Like, I, I want to know what he was telling Becca. Mm-hmm. And I'm more curious about, like, when he got back in touch with Lauren. But I, from just from watching so much reality TV and talking about it and thinking about it, I'm really curious about how he, how, how the production kind of handled it. Like, what, and hopefully we'll talk about that with Rob Mills on Wednesday, who's the guest for the B-side this week. But, like, when, when they get the call from Ari that he's thinking of breaking up with Becca, like, what has to mobilize? And that's kind of like, th- this is this conversation sort of flies in the face of my sympathy for Becca, but as like a sort of student of reality TV, I'm very curious about it. I was even wondering, you know, when did he get Lauren's number? Because yeah. like- I was wondering that too, like when do they all exchange numbers? Well, the thing is, I would imagine that you don't exchange numbers with the person you sent home. Like Sean and Catherine Lowe told me they, after they got engaged, they literally had to have a moment of, oh, we need to exchange numbers. You haven't had a phone in forever. So funny. And if she leaves- he had to either get her number from a producer or slide into the DMs or something. I, I don't know. know. Or maybe there was something to this mysterious meetup in Dallas that I still have questions about. So, I don't know. Yeah, actually, I want to know about that, too. We need to find out about the meetup in Dallas. Yeah. It's it's wild. I can't remember being this excited about a Bachelor episode in a long time. And I love The Bachelor. I love The Bachelor. I love this show. I love Becca. I'm here for Becca, Team Becca. Me too, and I'm here for a split screen. But let me ask you, <laughs> what do you what do you want the order of things to be at the after the final rose, which is live? Like, do you want Becca to come out first? Do you want Ari and Lauren to come out first? Do you want Becca to get a moment to confront? Like, well, how do you want things to go down? Great question. I hadn't thought about that. I would like to hear from Ari last. Ooh. I think I'd like to hear from Becca first, and then maybe Lauren, and then Ari, and then probably Ari and Lauren. I, I actually don't. I know we're going to get an Ari and Becca confrontation. But I, I don't know. We've seen them on the couch together enough. I think I think we know it's not going to go well. I want Becca to have the last word. I think she deserves it. Interesting. She's been through enough. Yeah. Well, hopefully being the bachelorette will afford her that, <laughs> I guess. Uh, Lauren, thank you so much for coming today. Oh, thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, thanks for listening. Check back on Wednesday for Rob Mills, for the B-side, and uh, more to come with Ari. There's still so much to suss out, and yet the season is over. Thanks again for listening. We're just coming out of Oscar season. We're not done yet. So go to TheRinger.com and check out all of the writing from Sean Fennessy, Cameron Collins, and the rest of our pop culture crew to make sense of the show that you saw last night and catch up on the movies you've probably just seen because you just heard about them. They've been doing great work all Oscar season and you won't want to miss it. So go to TheRinger.com, click on our movies tab, and you got everything you need right there. <laughs>